Oh, and with Balthazar, here comes Geronimo. Let's have a word with him. Welcome, Geronimo. Welcome, Geronimo. Welcome. Oh. Welcome. My lords, I thank you for Horatio. Geronimo, the reason that, that I have not sent to speak with you is this. I, uh, Uncomfortable, Castile doesn't know what to say next. A blast of music from the sound system distracts him. What? So short? Then I'll be gone. I thank you for No, it. no, stay, Geronimo. Go, call him, son. Geronimo, my father craves a word with you. With me, sir? Why, my lord, I thought you were down. No, would he had. <laughs> I hear you find yourself aggrieved, saying my son denies you access to the king. Why, is not this a miserable thing, my lord? Geronimo, I uh, hope you have no cause and would be loath that one of your desserts should want a reason to suspect my son, considering how I think of you myself. Deep in the scandalous reports of those that love not me, and hate my lord too much. Should I suspect Lorenzo will prevent or cross my suit that loved my son so well? My lord, I am ashamed, it should be said. Your honor, no, I never gave you cause. My good lord, I know you did not. <laughs> there then, pause. And for the satisfaction of the world here before Prince Balthazar and me, embrace each other and be perfect friends. Here they are. Oh no, Geronimo. What? Courting Belle Inferior? I, my lord, she hath my heart. But you, my lord, have hers. My help? Why, my good lord, assure yourselves of me. He promised us, in honor of our guests, to grace our banquet some pompous jet to entertain my father with the light or any such like pleasing notion assure yourself it will content them well <coughs> is this all i is this all he beckons to them lorenzo and balthazar arm around that imperial follow her on through the door into his steward's office when i was young i gave my mind and applied myself to fruitless poetry which though it profit the professor not yet is it passing pleasing to the world when in Toledo, where I studied, it was my chance to write a tragedy. So, here, my lords, which long forgot I found the other day. Would your lordships favor me so much as but to grace me with your acting in it? I mean, each one of you to play a part. I assure you, it will prove most passing strange and wondrous plausible to this assembly. What would you have us play a tragedy? Why, Nero thought he'd known this management. And kings and emperors have taken delight to make experience of their wits in plays. I have been not angry, good Geronimo. The prince but asked the question. Geronimo, if you be in earnest, I'll be in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I too. Now, my good lord, could you entreat your sister Bel Imperia to appear? But what's a play without a woman in it? This little entreaty shall serve me, Geronimo, for I must need to be employed in your play. You'll but let me know the argument. Oh, that shall I, Randy. The Chronicles of Spain record this, written of a knight of Rhodes. He was betrothed and wedded at the length to one Perseida, an Italian dame, whose beauty ravished all that her beheld, especially the soul of Soliman, who at the marriage was the chiefest guest. By sundry means sought Soliman to win Perseida's love and could not gain the same. He saw she was not otherwise to be won, save by her husband's death, this knight of Rhodes, who presently, by treachery, he slew. Balthazar pretends to slay Lorenzo. She stirred with an exceeding hate, therefore, as cause of this, slew Soliman. Bel Imperia pretends to get it wrong. Doesn't look at Balthazar at all. Did stab herself. This is the tragedy. Oh, excellent. And here, my lords, are several as abstracts drawn for each of you to note your parts and act it as occasions offered you. You must provide a Turkish cape, a black mustachio, and a falcon. And, madam, you must attire yourself. Geronimo, methinks a comedy were better. <laughs> <laughs> comedy? Funny! Comedies are fit for common wits. But to present a kingly truth with all, give me a stately written tragedy containing matter and not common things. And well it may, for I have seen the like in Paris amongst the French tragedy. In Paris? Very well remembered. <laughs> There's one thing more that rests for us to do. What's that, Geronimo? Forget not anything. Each one of us must act his part in unknown languages. 
that it may breed them all variety. <laughs> As you, my lord, in Latin, I in Greek, you in Italian, and for because I know that Belle Imperia hath practiced the French, in courtly French shall all her phrases be. You mean to try my cunning then, Ronald? But this will be a mere confusion, and hardly shall we all be understood. It must be so, for the conclusion shall prove the invention, and all good. Geronimo, the director, claps his hands. They go back to declaiming their parts in different languages. <laughs> She parks the wheelbarrow beside the trellis, removes a hacksaw and axe various tools. She pulls down the trellis covered in roses. Down with these branches and these loathsome boughs. Down with them. Isabella, rip them up. I will not leave a root, a stalk, a tree, a bough, a branch, a blossom, nor a leaf. No. Not a herb within this garden plot, a cursed complot of my misery. Fruitless forever may this garden be, barren the earth, and blissless whosoever imagines not to keep it unmanured. With the hacksaw she soars at the tree. An eastern wind, commixed with noisome airs, shall blast the plants and the young saplings. The earth with serpents shall be pestered, and passers-by for fear to be infect shall stand aloof, and looking at it tell. There murdered, died the son of Isabel. The tree falls, but she feels no doubt. Make haste, Geronimo, to hold excused thy negligence in pursuit of their deaths, whose hateful wrath bereaved him of his breath. Oh, thou dost delay their deaths, forgives the murderers of thy noble son, and none but I bestir me to no end. She cuts down some smaller plants with the gardening shears. She stares intently at the shears. And as I curse this tree from further fruit, so shall my room. Cursed for his sake, and with this weapon will I wound the breast, the helpless breast that gave Horatio son. She stabs herself. Geronimo comes walking up the garden path beside the canal. He's laughing to himself. <laughs> As you, my lord, in Latin, I in Greek, <laughs> <laughs> you in Italian. <laughs> Isabella! He pushes open the gate and finds her dead beside the felt tree in the bower. He sits down beside her, puts his head in his hands. Backstage, the actors are all making up as Geronimo and the page carry the bag through. Are you ready, Balthazar? Where's your beard? <laughs> oh, dispatch for shame, are you so long? He pauses beside Valentiria, who studies two knives. She taps them against the table. It's clear they are not prop knives. Geronimo takes another knife from his pocket, shows her that it retracts. He takes one of the real knives and puts it in a drawer, replaces it with the stage knife. He exits, carrying the bag. Del Imperia immediately opens the drawer and switches the knives again. She will only use the real. Break a leg. <laughs> On stage, Geronimo tacks up a large black crepe curtain at the back of the stage. Castile comes in, smoking a cigar. He stands beneath a big no-smoking sign. How oh, now, Geronimo? Where's your fellows that you take all this pain? Oh, sir, it is with the author's credit to look at all things may go well. But, uh, good my lord, let me entreat your grace to give the king this copy of the play. This is the argument of what we show. And are you in the play, Geronimo? Mm, I play the bachelor, who basely kills the noble knight of Rome. Geronimo! Oh, well done, Geronimo! <laughs> Yeah, put down the chair and cushion for the king. 